Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. Self the moment impressed. you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem, and this and that. Really? It's disastrous for a president to, even say to be he's unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy was it's a very, terrible. Like <laughs> terrible strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities, and quite frankly, Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news, and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. Interesting, you know, everything that was spoken about here today is based on where we're coming from. Everybody's advocacy, I want to believe, is from your background, your experience, or exposure to many things. And when the foundation is faulty, it stands to reason that the building will eventually collapse. As a family life advocate, my topic of choice today will be on the family. Each one of us here is from a family. And whatever we do, it speaks about where we're coming from. The first institution created by God is the family. He created the unit for the singular purpose of strengthening each individual for the betterment of themselves, the unit, and the society at large. The family unit should be a place of love, support, refuge, and safety. Core values, high moral standards, and sound ethics must be established and inculcated into each individual within the family. It is very important for each member of, uh, to have a, an identity, a sense of belonging, and a purpose. It is my observation that the family unit in recent times has been under enormous threat and a significant decline in familial relationships which in turn has reflected in the society, and this is very conspicuous. And that is why each person here is advocating for some inadequacy in the society. Unfulfilled promises, betrayal, emotional, verbal, and physical abuse, strive, sibling rivalry, and estrangement abound. Values are eroded, and there's outright moral decadence. I believe that the way people behave towards others and act in the society is indeed a reflection of their background. In the past, traditions were strong. Marriage was deemed sacred. Your word was your bond. Divorce rare. And verbal communication was the norm. Technology was not interrupting our conversations as we were more connected and communal, just like today. Research has shown that a quarter of homes in the UK make no more use of the dining table where familiar connections and conversations are majorly made during meal times. So let's pretend that this is a dining table today and we're all speaking based on events that matter in the society. This trend is also becoming prevalent in Nigeria. Countries that are family oriented have a better, safer and more stable society as we have seen in Finland, Norway, and Australia. And I remember in, um, I think, Finland, men actually take um, paternity leave because they want to be connected to the newborn and to their wives. Every family is unique with its own personal story. It resonates with the saying that life is not idyllic. Therefore, family life comes with its highs and low. With life comes with its challenges. Every family has its own challenge. And though we have different backgrounds or come from different aspects of our identity, we accept who we are and we come together as one in a family. Our personal battles and appropriate support of loving family system is very, very important. The weight of various battles can be lightened and burdens much easier as there's always strength in togetherness. I maintain that the most obvious inhibitor for, to family relationships is the philosophy of life. Attitude, the lifestyle where we live, and the culture we are bought into, a culture of money, billion, and you have millions, materialism, and success, which causes disconnection and suffocates the real loving interaction that people need and crave for. Though we may be unable to fix the past, we can rewrite our family story by having a family vision, a mission, core values, an identity as a family, what is Shomolu family known for? What is 
Shagari family known for? A family culture, a tradition, practice, business ventures that will outlive us, that will bind us and be passed on from generation to generation, just as the Jews and Indians are known for. It begins with you, Treasure, Bright, Nafisa, and Shegun, and of course, Bimbo. It begins with all of us. Oh, wow. That's quite interesting. Mm -hmm. I love yeah. it. <clears throat> family, family, family. Well, to be honest, I totally understand why the family, it's the foundational, it's the first you know, interaction a child has when he or she instantly enters society. It's the, you know, when you talk about children, that's the area, that's the phase of their lives in which they are molded. That's when they understand right from wrong, the truth from a lie. It's what builds them up to become the human. It's the lens. That's when they develop like the lens in which they see society <coughs> through and see other people through. So no one can underestimate what the family, how important the family is in society. To be honest, I feel, not like I feel, I know that because the, the way our society is structured now, how violent and terrible it might seem at some point, is because the family system is being eroded. We have a lot of dysfunctional homes today, a lot stories I've heard, fathers living, fighting, there's just, there's just a lot of stress on kids, mm. you know, Mo Sorry. so much. And that's why we have a lot of depression in children, suicidal yes. thoughts, anxiety, anxiety panic what's the, attacks. What's the, what's the, for me, what's the foundation of that? Like, especially when it comes to my generation, yeah. where people get married because of social media, like what they see on social media. Ah, yes. People focus an entire life, like marriage is forever. When you see a 15, a 15 second post and then you're like, I want to get married because of that. Yes. And you're looking for what to create that whole scenario yeah. so you can understand. post it. People actually get married because they want to post something for, for content. Yes. Why? Really? Oh. Yes. Oh. Yes. Oh. Oh. oh, yes. You guys have no idea I what's going so on. So people, right now. Lit people literally want to have babies because they see pictures of, of, of parents making their babies say things. And then I want to have a baby too. Wow. Do you understand? Like they don't understand the psychology and the responsibility yes. involved. They don't understand what it takes for you to, you know, come together and spend the rest of your life because it's not about you. Mm. You are transportation. I keep telling people, you know, like, please don't take this wrong. Parents are mostly transportation. They bring people into mm -hmm. the world right. and they ship them. They are transportation accommodation, Airbnb <laughs> and Airpiece. You bring them into the world, you bring them to the world, you, you house them, you, you, you teach them the ways, and, and then you, you let, let them go. Them. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So, but you, if you don't understand that, mm. if you don't understand that, you're going to send a lot of people into the world to destroy the world. And that's why we have a lot of problems, especially in the North, where, you know, people just get mm. married to, feed, to a lot of mm. wives and not understand that you're bringing children to the world and these children are going to be responsible or irresponsible mm. men and women. Mm. You will not take care of them. Okay, I want to pick on your analogy, please, Please. of the dining table. Yes. And the fact that we don't have that rallying point these yes. days anymore. And yes. when we do, we're busy looking at our phones, yes. the, how technology has disrupted family life. For me, when I go on dates nowadays, whether I have an appointment with you, I put away my phone. Mm -hmm. Because it's so dis distracting and it's it disrupts. And it, I think it shows a lack of respect as well for whoever mm -hmm. you're having a chat with. So first of all, I have started in my own little way. Fantastic. I have a conversation with you. I put my phone away and finish with your one-on-one, -on -one, give you the value of that time, mm. you know, and then go back to it. I think we should start from there as yeah. well, to begin to value our time together. They say something um, in, in that you don't touch a, uh, you don't touch water twice, that you don't touch the river twice. Once that ripple goes, you know, the ripples, it goes. We yeah. really can talk about the family unit as a critical unit without mm -hmm. beginning to talk about society as well. Mm -hmm. Because society have a lot of influence on, on family, as family have influence on society. So it's a, it's a cyclical thing. Um, there's something also called the social pyramid, where our parents begin to flaunt their kids, you know, introduce them and usher them you know, uh, into a world of competition, mm -hmm. where every child grows up thinking they are alive to be better than their neighbor. Mm -hmm. So when they grow up with that mentality, everything they do is to score a point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know people who went to certain schools just because they want to be better than the neighbor's kid. Mm -hmm. So when you grow up with this, you have a huge gulf in your mm -hmm. heart mm -hmm. that can never be filled by better jaws, by anything. You know, so with this, you have a lot of unfulfilled people spreading hate all over the place. 
Yeah. And that's why you see a lot of people with different colored bags without ethics, without values, without honors, raising children that will never be catered for. No, I have a question to ask. You know, because like I said, we have a very dysfunctional society and because yeah. of that we have dysfunctional families that produce dysfunctional children. Right. You know, this is me talking from a little bit of experience, even with my friends and myself as well. So you realize you grow up and you say, this is not, you know, this is not something I want to replicate mm. in my yes. own society because, yeah. you know, you can't exactly help where you've come from, yeah. but you can affect where, where you're, you're going, going to. to. So now you have young adults mm. that you know you want to have a happy family and you know where you're coming from is a bit dysfunctional now what are the steps that you take to make sure that you know this what happened doesn't repeat itself i've had friends that said that you know what you know when i got married i didn't i didn't think that what i went through with my parents you know i didn't think those things were going to repeat itself and then i entered my own marriage and i saw myself exhibiting something i'm like no i need to take a break and they would eventually go for therapy for by themselves before taking their husband because they don't want to repeat the, the cycle. same the yeah, cycle yeah. the same mistakes that they they saw yeah, their friends are, thank you very much for opening up because mm -hmm. i mean many of us act like ostriches and mm -hmm. a lot of things that happen to us really is is a reflection of where we're coming from mm -hmm. well Listen. as we have explored papering over the cracks is never a recipe for change or restoration and that is certainly not a mandate here on the advocate do keep your comments coming in on facebook Plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to www.plustvafrica.com slash the advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. I trust we've left you with plenty of food for thought. Till this time next week, when the advocate will be hitting you with loaded topics, no holds barred. Let's keep advocating for a better society and make sure that 2020 counts. Bye. Okay. Bye, and thank you. Thank you. Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, Everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem, and this is that. Really? disastrous for a president to, even say to be he's unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's was a very, terrible. Very, very <laughs> terrible strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities, and quite frankly, Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news.